Hey, welcome to uh, Nervesick HQ. In this video, we're going to be building our very own entry-level gaming PC. We've got some great brands we're going to be welcome. We've got Corsair, Gigabyte, Corsair Power Supply, Corsair Memory, Gigabyte Motherboard, WD Drives, SSD and a hard drive, and AMD uh, CPU. We've got a Ryzen 5, one of the new ones, the Ravenwood chips. So we've got the onboard graphics. So there'll be no graphics card installation in this. And that reiterates our entry gaming level PC because obviously graphics cards are very expensive. The case we're using for this build is a Corsair Air 240 Mini Tower case. We chose a yeah, Mini Tower case because as an entry level gaming PC, we didn't want a huge case which will look empty inside. The Mini Tower fits our needs to what we want. The Corsair it has great airflow and obviously it goes with all the parts we've got as well with Corsair. Let's start by taking the side off the case. Unscrew the screws and slide the side off. The motherboard we'll be using is this Gigabyte motherboard. It is an AM4 socket Ryzen motherboard as we're doing an AMD Ryzen build. Very reliable, very durable. It does everything we need it to in this entry level gaming PC build. Processor wise, we're using this AMD Ryzen 5 chip. It's one of the Raven Ridge chips and it has the onboard Radeon Vega graphics. Perfect for an entry gaming level PC. You don't have to spend 600, 500 pound on a graphics card. It does it all for you and gives you great graphics with an onboard chip. We'll start by installing the CPU onto the motherboard, which is fairly straightforward. To get access to where we're going to install it, pull up the locking lever. The best way to know which way around your CPU goes, look at the corners of the pins on the underside of the chip. There should be three angled corners, but one will be more squared. That will match the sockets on the motherboard. Once you know which way around it is, place the chip gently onto the socket. Now it's in, lower the lever to lock it into place. Corsair Vengeance Memory. The good thing about this memory, RGB. Quite expensive for what you'd have for a uh, entry level gaming PC, but this is what we've pushed the boat out on because RGB. It is RGB. Everyone wants a bit of RGB in their, in their PC nowadays. We've pushed the boat out on this 16 gig DDR4 memory from Corsair. Installing the memory is also fairly straightforward. When putting two sticks in, just make sure that they're in the same channels on the board, usually indicated by the colours of the slots, but it also shows a slot number on the board just above the slots too to check. So as we're installing two sticks of dual channel memory, I'll install these into the black slots. Open the clips at the end of each slot by pushing them gently down and away. The RAM slot is divided into two sections, a longer and a shorter one. This will match up with the pins on the memory stick. Insert the stick into the slot and press down. You'll hear a click when it's fully in and the clip should flip back up to lock into place. Now that the processor and memory are installed, let's put the motherboard into the case and crack on. An annoying but sometimes common mistake that can be made, forgetting to insert the ISO shield at the back of the case. Do that now, making sure the clip's securely into place. It can sometimes be a bit fiddly, but it will get there. When inserting your motherboard into the case, you need to make sure that all the screw holes in your motherboard line up with the standoffs on your case. There is usually a key stamped into the case indicating where your standoffs need to be. In this build, we're using a mini ITX board, which in the key says use the holes signaled M. So making sure that their standoffs inserted into all these and that the motherboard lines up with all of them first. If they're right, you should be able to line up the board's ports into the I.O. shield and it will sit on top of the standoffs. When screwing in the motherboard, half tighten the screws to get the board into place and space out the order of the screws to ensure there's not too much pressure on one part of the motherboard. One thing to note is to make sure that none of your loose cables are trapped underneath the motherboard. Top tip of the video, if you've never installed one of these before, have a quick read through of the installation guide that comes with your case. It doesn't make you any less of a builder. It will clearly show you how to connect the buttons, lights and ports in the front of your case to the main board. We've gone for a all-in-one Corsair liquid CPU cooler. You don't always have these on an entry-level gaming PC. You can use a stock cooler. There is quite a good stock cooler with the um, AMD chips. There's a few different parts to the cooler, but it easily comes together, so don't be overwhelmed.
When taking the plastic covering off, take as much care as not to touch the surface as you need this paste on there and it'll also make a mess on your PC and on your fingers. This cooler comes with the Intel brackets installed as standard. We need to however take them off and put the AMD brackets on to fit our motherboard. Taking these brackets off can be tough. Keep pulling and give them a bit of a wiggle and they'll eventually give up their fight. Make sure the brackets are the right way around when slotting them in. You want them so that they stick up that side is at the top of the cooler when screwing it down and again they can be a bit tough to put on but keep pushing. The locking nuts need to go through the bracket holes now. Put the key side in through the bottom and the screw through the top but you don't need to fully tighten these yet as you'll need a bit of play in them to lock the heatsink down later on. Now we need to touch the fan to the radiator block. Line up the holes in the fan with the block and then use the long screws provided. The cable for the radiator fan will plug into the CPU fan header on the mainboard. As with many builds not everything goes to plan. The radiator block with the fan attached does not sit at the top of this case as it fouls against the motherboard. This is not a problem as we can swap the block with the front two fans. To take off the fans, take the front of the case off and undo the four screws holding each fan into place and it should then come out and put them to one side. Now we have plenty of space at the front to mount the radiator, line up the holes in the front of the case and then screw it in. You'll notice we've unplugged a few cables, so don't worry about this. When we unplug some of them to make things a little easier, you shouldn't need to do this. Now to attach the cooler, check out how much play you have with the screws and the hooks. Attach the one with the hooks under the lip of the black plastic either side of the CPU. Place the heat sink gently on top of the chip and attach the opposite hook. Once they're in place, you can tighten the screws putting the cooler into place. Ensure not to over tighten the thumb screws. Now to quickly plug the cables back in that were taken out before. We're going to reattach the case fans now, this time at the top rather than the front where we took them off. Align the screw holes with the appropriate place on the case and tighten. Storage, we've gone for the uh, typical one SSD and one hard drive. We've got a uh, WD blue 240 gig SSD and then we've got a two terabyte WD black hard drive. We'll obviously we'll be installing the uh, OS on the SSD, quite common nowadays. The two and a half inch drive bays are located at the top of the case. Remove the top of the case and locate the bays. Pinch the sides of the bay in and slide it out. Now you notice there's small little holes in the sides of the drive. Align these with the small metal pins on the bay on one side and then pressing the drive in you should be able to connect the other sides easily now and slide the bay back in. The three and a half inch drive bays are accessed through a small panel in the back of the case. Undo the small thumb screws and this will allow us access to install the hard drive. Repeat the same process as we just did with the SSD. Pinch the sides of the bay in and slide it out. Line up the holes on the drive with the pins in the sides of the bay and slide back in until you hear it click. You now have the connections for easy access for better cable management. Now just screw the access panel back into place. There will be two cables to connect to each drive a SATA data cable to the motherboard and one from the power supply but we haven't actually installed that yet so we'll do that next. Power supply, we've got the Corsair VS650 power supply. It's a 650 watt power supply. You can get away with a 500 watt for an entry level gaming PC. We've erred on the uh, side of caution for future upgrades really. If you ever want to upgrade, put anything else in there, you don't want to upgrade the power supply. Installing the power supply is as easy as lining up the screw holes in the power supply and the back of the case and screwing into place. We're going to need to unleash all of these cables from the power supply, so undo the cable tie and set them free. We have the SATA power cables for our hard drives now, so we can connect these into the back of each drive. Use another connector on that same cable for the other drive, the closest one possible, but to ensure that no cables are overstretched. Next, feed the power cable for the CPU cooler to the back of the case and connect it to one of the three SATA power connectors. We now need to attach the other power cables for the mainboard, the 24-pin ATX power and the 8-pin CPU power. Make a note of where they will be plugging into on the motherboard. This way we can use the correct holes in the case to feed them through. That way there's as little cable inside the case as possible for better cable management.
All these cables are a bit of a mess. The better and more experienced you are at building PCs, the more you can do to reduce the mess of cables along the way. However, we've just gone through a simple basic setup here and we'll be doing all the cable management later. Before we do all the cable management though, let's check that it powers on first, as we're now complete. Grab yourself a monitor and connect the cable into the correct port at the back. Make sure the power supply is switched on and hit the power switch on the front of the PC. If everything works, you should have power. Now we complete the build. Last thing to do, take this, uh, take this off the side window. Oh, that's glorious. Oh, that's good. Somehow we doubled up. There's, oh, there's one on the inside. Just fooled me there, didn't it? All in all, quite a successful build, I think. We had one problem, obviously, with the uh, C liquid CPU cooler. Didn't fit at the top, obviously, so we had to take the front fans off. That could vary from case to case. This is quite a small case, so we had to do that. With a bigger case, you probably could stick it to the, the ceiling of the case. I can see uh, a few people in their heads like, what's going on with their cables? Well, at the end, we, you should probably do it along the way. I found that out myself, really. Sometimes I like to do it at the end, personally. Get everything in, make sure it all boots up, and then tidy up. That's what PC building is all about. You find a problem, you go around it. Thanks to uh, Corsair, AMD, Gigabyte, and WD for their help with the video. If you have any problems doing anything, feel free to drop us a message in the bottom, in the comments below. Contact our tech support They're behind me. They're eager to answer your call, or your live chat, or your email. So if you're worried about anything, drop them a line, and they'll be able to help you whatever you want. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you learned something. See you soon.